to Mood India, California Arts Association's presentation of Performing Arts from India. I am your host, Arvind Kansal. Continuing our series of Indian musical instruments, today we bring to you the first part of our program on Mridangam, an Indian percussion instrument. Mridangam is very widely used in Carnatic music. In the studio I have here with me Vadi Raj Bhatt, an accomplished Mridangam player from San Francisco Bay Area. Accompanying him is the Carnatic vocalist Raghavan Manian. Vadiraj has learned how to play Mridangam first from Sri B. R. Sridhar and then from the world famous T. V. Gopalakrishna. Raghavan has been a student of Sri Dr. Balamurli Krishna. Welcome again. Thank you very much. Vadiraj, can you introduce you, us to and our audience to Mridangam and give us some background and historical origins of it? Um, Mridangam is believed to be a, a prehistoric instrument. Mm -hmm. It has its uh, roots in our epics. Uh, it seems to be the instrument that Lord Nandi, the bull-faced Nandi, played when Shiva did his cosmic dance. Mm -hmm. It goes back to that age. In Sanskrit, it is called Mrit Anga. That means one which is made out of clay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it basically has a cylindrical structure. Mm -hmm. uh, centerpiece nowadays is replaced with a wood, uh, preferably mm -hmm. a jack wood. Mm -hmm. uh, they take a whole branch and they, then they start carving, carving the inner uh, uh, layers of it and mm -hmm. they make a cylindrical hollow structure. Mm -hmm. On the two sides of it, we have mouthpieces, which are made out of uh, skins from various animals. It has goat skin, it has uh, uh, calf skin, and it has, uh, on the left hand side, it has a bison skin. Mm -hmm. And these two are held together originally by, again, it used to be a buffalo skin, but these days we have replaced it with uh, synthetic strings, which I are see. more weather resistant. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you see, it has left side, which is the base side and it has the right side which is the uh, the melody side uh -huh. and as you see on the center of it you we have a black portion which is made out of uh, predominantly an iron oxide composition uh -huh. it seems to be a crushed stone which is rich in iron oxide and they coat it methodically and that's what gives the the melody melody on Osmurdangam so that's the uh, construction of the Mridangam and sometimes these compositions are kept very secret and because seem to be uh, some sort of a proprietary nature of it uh, between each construction. And generations of people work on uh, making these Mridangams. Absolutely, absolutely. Right? So lot of family tradition. Family tradition and even today in Madras and in uh, all parts of South India, mm -hmm. people are, uh, you know, have generations who worked on this particular instrument. I see. And uh, it's very melodious instrument. And as you can see, it, it has a very melodic tone. Mm -hmm. And a uh, lot of people ask, oh, you just tap on it, is, is that that easy? Right. And well, I you say, You make hey, it look very easy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, why don't you come and try it? And uh, pr probably you should give it a sure. try. Sure. Well, um, doesn't quite seem to make the same sound with me. Absolutely. So, this first beat took me almost six months wow. to even perfect uh, to the level that I'm playing now. Uh, and my guru and my gurus, when, when they play, it, it's even more beautiful. And that's the uh, nature of this uh, instrument and uh, I'm, I hope you... Uh, so it's not just uh, putting the fingers against, it's a very specific location and, a, and the way of uh, bringing out the melody. Yes, and there are very specific areas that you need to play uh, on this particular surface, which produces different sounds. So that gives it more, it makes it more beautiful to listen and uh, uh, play for us. Now Indian uh, music, both uh, North Indian as well as the South Indian Carnatic music, they have uh, percussion instruments. So what makes uh, Mridangam unique? Um, Mridangam is a very unique instrument in the sense, as I have explained before, it has a bass side and it has a treble side mm -hmm. or the melody side. This is the only instrument, uh, apart from tabla, where you have this kind of a combination. Typically, we see a bass as, uh, 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 or just the melody as the percussion instrument. Right. Out here, it has both. And together, they produce unbelievable combination. So, 
you can attribute it to the masculine side of it which is the left and the feminine side of it which is the right that means this has more uh, sur or nadam uh, uh, and you can play a lot more beats with it but this has a very majestic or what we called um, uh, an a gravity right to the beat right. so together they provide a such uh, appealing uh, uh, um, feeling so that's mm-hmm. why we call it purush and stree it's a perfect harmony that you can see in only this instrument i say i say um for you personally what uh, attracted you to mridangam how were you initiated to it um it seems uh, i have a small photograph in my uh, uh it seems was a childhood mm-hmm. where i'm playing a dolki dolak uh, and my father uh, once told me that uh, it seems a beggar uh, came by our house with the dolak and then uh, my father gave something and i started immediately crying mm-hmm. and my father thought i may be scared of the beggar right. it seems i wanted the dolak and i wanted to play that so finally i i even cried for half an hour and then he had to pay extra to that beggar mm. to get that dolak and i you know um, so you could play it i could play it yes. and even when i go to all the festivals temples or marriages i was more drawn towards the percussion instruments while puja was happening in the temple i would be with the drummer mm-hmm. enjoying it more than the aarti and the festivity i see Uh, and then it got worse uh, i started banging all over the places uh, i started banging walls and doors and started breaking things that's when my dad said enough is enough i have to put you to some instrument mm-hmm. and he was uh, oriented towards carnatical music because he was born and brought up in mysore mm-hmm. which happens to be the uh, the karnataka center for uh, carnatic music i see and there i met my first guru uh, vidwan b r shridhar mm-hmm. who gave a a sound foundation for my mridangam techniques uh, in theory as well as in uh, practical um, concert playing mm-hmm. and techniques mm-hmm. and later in 90s i came across uh, my, uh, uh, maestro my idol uh, professor tv gopalkrishnan who took me in his arms and uh, took me to a different level and uh, today i am what i am because of uh, his blessings and uh, guidance let's see a lot of percussion uh, percussion instrument players that i know play uh, and are quite skillful at playing other instruments too it, did you share such uh, uh, things also uh yes um, i have tried uh, my hands once you kind of learn this mridangam and for that matter our indian instrument mm-hmm. it kind of gives a lot more uh, understanding of the, how the rhythmic part you know uh, thing is so i started playing dolak in light music concerts uh, I, i even tried once punjabi dol uh-huh. uh, in one of the uh, bamboo dance uh, thing it was it was a great experience so one of these days i wanted to learn almost all the percussion instrument that's my goal i uh, hope i can do that in a uh, mridangam performance uh, what is it that makes it beautiful and uh, what how do you make it aesthetically pleasing uh, as i was saying it has both a bass and a uh, and 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 uh, the melody side mm-hmm. this gives us a unique uh, uh, opportunity to not only enhance the presenter uh, uh, presenter's music typically a vocalist or instrumentalist mm-hmm. uh, and also uh, also do improvise on the spot with lot more variations mm-hmm. and uh, you can actually bring up a notch of uh, in in terms of the concerts you can uh do kind of a positive feedback with the main performer mm-hmm. with the kind of uh, opportunity that we get on mridangam and uh, enhance it to a whole different uh, um, uh, level i see i see um so can you show us you know the basic uh, uh, ways of playing mridangam sure um mridangam uh, is is uh, is a rhythmic instrument so mm-hmm. for every rhythmic instrument we have to have the uh, uh, the for especially for mridangam there are 10 aspects of uh, the rhythm mm-hmm. uh, i'm only going to touch upon few of them because um, that's what actually people can feel and right. see uh, first one is the 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 count or the number of beats that we call kala pramanam mm-hmm. so we are based on tal mm-hmm. that we have a, sp- a set of in ancient days we had 108 talas mm-hmm. uh, tal is the rhythm yes rhythm mm-hmm. and uh, the total count of uh, uh, of the beat and then we came down to 35 and these days we only have compositions typically sung in you know 10 to 15 talas at I the see. maximum 
so we have kala uh, we have kala pramana for all these talas so the, that's number of beats mm-hmm. so these number of beats uh, decide what talam it is so adi talam is the most ancient mm-hmm. tal of all mm-hmm. so which, which has a eight beat total cycle count of eight and this talam is shown with our hand movements hand gestures okay. that we call angas so an adi talam is shown like one two three four five six seven eight one two three so this is how it's it repeats i see as you see i have some hand gestures right so these are called angas and the 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 uh, action of hitting and clapping Clapping. are called kriyas so there are shabda kriyas and there are nishabda kriyas i see so this is uh, what i'm counting is called lagu and when i turn my hand which is called dhrita and Same. and we have anudrita and other three, three more angas called guru plata and kakapada which are not that common in our uh, tradition uh-huh. um and then as you see when i was putting this talam there is an amount of counts which goes between each of these beats right that decides what we call gatis i could be saying 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 this is what we call chaturashtra this is the, so this is the speed we are talking about uh, yes and, and I, actually not the speed mm-hmm. it's a count per beat i see right so i could have three beats ta ke ta 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 2 3 this is trishtra gati mm-hmm. i could be having a khanda gati 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 taka taki ta taka taki ta taka taki ta same talam mm-hmm. i'm just changing the gatis right so likewise there are five gatis mm-hmm. sankirna and uh, mishra if you look they are all uh, prime numbers i see they are all prime numbers mm-hmm. so that's the number 3 those mm-hmm. who are interested in uh, then comes the speed the mm-hmm. one which you mentioned uh-huh. so i could be saying one 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 half of it is 1 2 1 2 1 2 ta ka di na ta ka ja no i can go eight times ta ka di na ta ka ja no 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 so that is eight aha uh-huh. so that is the 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 kala pramana so which is vilamba kala madhyama kala and dhrata kala So these are the typical main three things that people see in the concert if if they kind of observe. Mm-hmm. And uh on the mridangam uh, this is widely used in all sorts of presentation. And coming back to the uh, mridangam aspect we have basically eight notes. So on the left we have these are basic notes and together they there are some more notes which uh-huh. I'm not going to allude to right now. Mm-hmm. So which is we have something called ka and do on the left. Uh-huh. So if you see ka do and on the right we have ta ri or di as well and then we have na and we have di and we have tam and we have do so likewise these are eight see. together you can say di uh-huh. right and so ta uh-huh. so likewise the basic beat uh, basic note of this is na di na na di So these are the basic beats and there are a lot more that you can do with the mridangam. You can show us a couple of examples? Sure. Uh one of the uh, initial beat that they do is ta te ti ta ti ki ta ti ta ti ta ti ki ta to ta ti ta ti ki ta nam ta ti ta ti ki these are the bala patas. Ta ta ti this is the balapata sar parans and uh-huh. then the we have sarva lagos this is what typically used in what we call sarva lagu used in concerts when we accompany right. them that's where i have heard them most correct yeah. so in um, talking about concerts uh-huh. um, uh, i've seen uh, uh, places where mridangam is being played as an accompanying instrument mm-hmm. and uh, something that has always uh, amazed me is that not only is mridangam accompanying another vocalist or another instrument but it is going off and playing some complex uh, variations of its own 
It's not just keeping track of the basic rhythm. Mm -hmm. So in, in those cases, who's keeping track of the bass rhythm? So um, this is one of the uh, one of the main differences that I can see between uh, Carnatic and uh, Hindustani music. Mm -hmm. uh, in Hindustani music, I think the tabla uh, uh, player is the one who keeps the rhythm. That's also true in the Western music too. Yeah, so yeah. They, they keep that, that, that part of it. They are under the control. There is specific beat which actually starts and ends the cycle and right. people tune to it. In Mridangam, and in Carnatic music for that matter, the main performer is actually putting the stalas. As I was uh, explaining before, the angas, with the angas, mm -hmm. he will be hand gesturing that the beginning and the ending of the talas. Uh -huh. So, no need to keep the talas. That gives us a lot of improvisation uh, opportunity for both of us, right. as the right. main performer as well as for uh, Mridangas. Mm -hmm. Since we don't have to worry about somebody keeping the bait, we can just go on. We are like teenagers. You know, mm. just out of control. Yes. But we are kept through our our hand gesture like our parents. You mm. know, they always tell us because you have to come back and come meet. back. Right. So that gives us a good reference point, and based on that, we do a lot of improvisation. And then finally, we we meet at the salient points where we are supposed to be. I see. So that that that's a major difference that I can see, mm -hmm. and that's why people wonder. You know, what do you guys? I mean, how how do you come back and things like this? That's the difference. So how about if it's uh, an instrumentalist playing and you're accompanying? Uh, in instrumentalist playing, typically we have a third person helping us in the front or to the sides, putting the talas so that they kind of see. And very skilled instrumentalist I've seen, they don't even need. They really? just use their legs. And uh, mentally, uh, I have even one blind violin player who, who can't see anything, but his sense of rhythm is amazingly sharp. So, but he is ah. mentally even tuned to that. As you go progress, you know, more into the field, then you don't need actually hand gestures at all. Oh, that, and that can, is that is amazing. Yeah, that's true. Um, let's talk more about mridangam used as an accompanying instrument. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what are the basic? Uh, what are the key styles uh, uh, from that aspect? Um, mridangam playing it, it has uh, wide. You know, where it is in terms of its style and, and the play techniques. I'm just going to allude to a few of them mm -hmm. with the help of my friend. Uh, and Adelaide. if you can, yeah, show some examples. Yeah. Um, uh, f the first and foremost that comes to my mind is uh, uh, the uh, expressing the mood and the sahityam of the song. Mm -hmm. Every composer has taken utmost care while composing a specific song. And when song, it also, the rhythm is inbuilt because the rhythm also is. Uh, amplifying and the sahityam and the bhavam or the mood. I see. Uh, so to give you an example, we have a slow pace or vilambit kal uh, presentations, where a composer is explaining or are explaining a sp specific uh, uh, part of it or a specific uh, nature of a god or something like that, mm -hmm. which means that we have to slow down and enjoy every aspect, every corner of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. That is called vilambit kal. And in the Madhyam Kal, it's more like a con you know, contem you know, I'm just contem uh, contemplating what you know, I'm thinking, my thoughts are moving, you know, uh -huh. I'm just questioning myself. It's a continuous. So it is slow pace, it's not fast, uh, but it is not really slow, but it is free flow, which is I called see. Madhyam Kal. And then we have uh, the, the Dhrita Kal, that means I'm very joyful, mm -hmm. I can't express, you know, enough, so I'm being really driven. So that is the Dhrita Kal. So more of a playful. Playful. So these three pieces Raghavan is going to play, mm -hmm. uh, sing now, and then I, I'll be accompanying, and then I'll come back to the two more styles. Okay.
विलंब का सर्टन ग्रेविटी टू करेक्ट कंडेन 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 सीत कंडेन रघव कंडेन 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 सीत कंडेन रघव कंडेन कंडेन कंड together in a very aesthetically pleasing manner which also has a very basic mathematics built into it mm-hmm. and sings that and comes to a pallavi or, or one part of the phrase in the main presentation so raghavanu is going to give a small swara prastharam which is completely improvised and we all meet together on on on, on some known places okay and uh, and the best part is until this moment Vadi does not know what I am going to sing, mm. and I do not know what I am going Absolutely. to sing. Absolutely, and that's the beauty of it. Okay. <laughs> of it is that when he is singing some specific sahityam we have to actually emphasize and make it more beautiful mm-hmm. by emphasizing and or de-emphasizing at times I so see. this can be seen in a very specific uh, uh, kriti called tilanas and there are a lot more but it is very predominant which is similar to tarana uh-huh. so raghavan is going to sing a piece of tilana which i am going to be following <laughs> <laughs> Nadrdrdim tananom nom tanana tadaradare nom tadare tilana nadrdrdim tananom nom tadara tadaradare nom tadare tilana nadrdrdim tananom nom nom tadara tadaradare nom tadare tilana nadrdrdim tananom nom tadara tadaradare nom tadare tilana nadrdrdim tananom nadrdrdim tananom nadrdrdim Dare nadr 
See the similarities to yes. Tattarana. So that that's where we kind of improvise uh, while singing. When using Bradangam as an accompanying instrument in performances, you know, w- what is it that distinguishes uh, a skilled Bradangam player, and what does he bring to the concert? Just don't screw up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, one of the things uh, with the very accomplished Bradangist is uh, what differentiates is that one who uh, who al- already knows how the as a performer he's a complete performer like my guru tv gopalakrishnan who is not only a performer but a singer as well and who can understand what the the singer is doing and emphasize more on the bhava sahitya and even give positive feedback to the singer and make it more colorful i see, I see. so uh, would you play us a piece and uh, give us some uh, example of, sure. of your, your guruji and your teacher uh, ragavan is now going to uh, sing a bhajan mm-hmm. to which i'll be accompanying um, and then uh, we will uh, uh, we, uh, that that this this is the part where my guru gives lot more importance to the nadam okay. and uh, ragavan is going to sing a purandar das bhajan <coughs> govinda ಗೋವಿಂದ ನಿನ್ನ ನಾಮ ವಿಚಂದ ಗೋವಿಂದ for joining us bodidias is presentation of pradangam was brought to you by california arts association we welcome your feedback and suggestions and hope to see you again until then namaskar